In this short video clip I want to complete my uh, OSPF configuration so that all the PCs on the left hand side can talk to the PCs on the right hand side. In order to do that I need to enable OSPF on the link between R4 and R5, that's already done, and I need to uh, also enable OSPF on those sub-interfaces on the left hand side on R4 and same on the sub-interfaces on R5 on on the right hand side here. Now I did use two different methods, probably for consistency sakes it's better to stick to one, but I just wanted to show that there are two ways of doing this. On R4 I used a network statement in order to tell OSPF which interfaces it should be running on. On R5 I used the interface command, so let's complete that maybe real quick. So let's first check on the left hand side, so show IP OSPF interface brief, what we have here. It is already enabled on those interfaces show run with a network statement in the routing process so let's go look for a section OSPF let's complete that so interface uh, router OSPF 1 and interface uh, 10 1 2 2 5 4 should be running OSPF in area 0 that's done and the same with 3 so at this point, oops, I made a typo, it's supposed to be 3. So at this point, do show IP OSPF interface brief. I'm running OSPF on all interfaces. So at this point, the, in, the interface uh, 131 and 12 are running OSPF. The subnets 10.1.3.0, are being advertised not the interface uh, address but the mask is slash 24 so R5 should see them in the routing table show IP route OSPF and it does obviously that's one way now the returning path must be also working so R4 needs to learn 10140 and 10150 I'll quickly jump to R5 and do conf t router actually I, I was doing this on per interface basis I will go to loopback zero as well so the interfaces that I have here is interface loopback zero I'll say IP OSPF process one area zero I'll do the same on the interface E0024 and 25 so at this point show IP OSPF uh, interface brief. I'm running OSPF on all interfaces and those subnets 10140 slash 24, 10150 slash 24 should be learned on R4 at this point. Let's check that. Show IP route OSPF. Enter. And sure enough, so at this point, the let's say PC1 should be able to ping 104105 and 5106. Let's verify that. And it can, and 5106, and it can, we can also do trace route there, and it goes through our gateway 10.12.254, then it jumps to R5, 10.145.5, and finally ends up on the PC on the other end. So let's go back to our three tables in OSPF. First, the neighbor table, show IP OSPF neighbor. This is the neighbor table, show IP OSPF database. Now we see that there are two routers in area zero, right there. This is a 4444 and 5555. Each one of them is advertising four links. So that's three links on Ethernet segments and one loopback. There's one DR which is connected to the 10.145.5. Obviously that's a connection between them, we've seen it. And finally, let's see the routing table, show IP route OSPF, what's in there? Well, in there we have the OSPF signified 
routing entries and there's a 5555 with a slash 32 and it's connected to 10.145.5 on that interface and the network was learned 7 minutes 50 seconds ago we have 10.140 which is this subnet here also available via the next hub 10.145.5 and 10.150 now, what is this square brackets and what are the, the, these two values? The first one is something called administrative distance. So how much the vendor trusts the uh, routing source of information. If let's say I had two routing protocols, maybe EIGRP and OSPF, EIGRP, and they would advertise the same um, subnet slash 24, this, the system would trust the one with the lower value and EIGRP, for example, value uh, administrative distance is 90 versus 110 in OSPF. So let's say routing, static routing is, is for example, one. So that is the, that is a trustworthiness uh, value. And the lower is always more preferred. Second value in square brackets is the cost in OSPF. And OSPF uh, calculates cost based on predefined uh, formula which is 10 to the power of 8 divided by the bandwidth of the interface so for example if I look at the 4 now this interface 1014 let's just look at this subnet here why is it 20 because this is 10 to the power of 8 divided by the bandwidth of that interface so if I jump on R5 and I do show interface E00 uh, sorry 24 include BW it's 10,000. So 10 to the power of 8, which is 8 zeros divided by this number, is cost of 10. And that's what it is being advertised towards the router 4. We've seen it in the database, show IP OSPF database. And we, we if we ask for router, when this router is advertising this prefix, it has a metric cost worth of 10. And that needs to be added to the cost to reach R5, which is this interface on R4. This is also the same bandwidth, so 10 plus 10 is going to be 20. If we look at this show IP route OSPF, maybe, actually, let's go for 10140. Also, we can look at the uh, entry in a more detailed output, and more detailed output shows me that this entry is 10140/24 learned via OSPF process 1 the administrative distance is 10 the total metric is 20 the route belongs to the same area area 0 in my case it's not inter area it's intra area available via this next hub obviously asterisk indicated the next packet is going to be sent to this next hub so that is basically the routing table in OSPF and in the next video clip we're going to cover the authentication of OSPF packets.